I'm going to need more than just the definitions. Mm. I'm going to need some evidence to back that up. Yes. And all I just want to see is, do you have the evidence to support yes. that, uh, more extraordinary? Mm. That is that is beautiful. I'll yeah. go with one. Okay, and let's it. see what happens. Let's try it. It's because I really love this topic so much. Uh -huh. I, I wish I had more time to investigate all of this. I think mathematics are discovered and not uh, invented. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And the, the reason, the, oh, reason yeah. the reason why I'm coming up with this, what? Sorry, the reason why oh, I yeah. said that I'm open oh, to, yeah. to discuss about this is because I want to, I want to be con convinced of the opposite, I, and I don't. Well, have, that's not my job. Oh, that is okay, but okay. For, in in a conversation, mm. because regrettably we don't have, and when I say we, maybe I'm not talking about the whole of humanity, but this beautiful opportunity of having conversations. I don't, I don't have it that, that often. So. so what do you mean by mathematics? Mathematics. So it's a system, it says it's the way the, the, the universe is structured mm -hmm. and it seems that, that it, it, can only be, it can only be understood by rational minds. Oh, this is interesting. Oh, you said two very interesting things here. Yeah. So just back up. You said mathematics are discovered and not invented, right? right? Yes. Okay. And you said you define mathematics as something that can only be discovered or known by rational minds? Yes. And then you also said that uh, mathematics, it represents the universe or truth of the universe? Well, it it's a way to understand uh, the universe. So it might oh, it's be just kind a, of, it's yeah, a, it, it's kind of a language in order to understand the rationality. It's of a the way universe. to make models. Yes, yes. Okay, it's a way to make models. When you say only by rational minds, does that also include other things than human minds? That is, that is a good question. What I mean by that, as far as we know, as far as we know, or let's put it this way, as far as I know, uh, there's nothing in the universe right now that we know that can understand a mathematical language and recognize a pattern in order to to come up with with uh, with a structure, so we can understand things that are going to happen in the universe. Just throwing this out, like so. There's a if I showed you like a video, you're saying only humans can understand it, as far as you understand. It's as far as I understand, yes, and that's why I love this conversation. If we do, for example, to show you a video of like a chimpanzee counting down on an LCD display, numbers from 100 down to one yeah. to get a banana, yeah, and then they rearrange the numbers, and he's looking at the numbers again, he's like 199, uh -huh, uh -huh. and you can even take some numbers out, and he still knows after. 68 the lowest next number is 56 <laughs> yeah. and he's still going down in the right order is are you saying that doesn't count well it, it counts now that is a good question because it takes us to to the more specific mm. and i wasn't specific enough okay. and that's why i love this conversation as as yeah, yeah yeah which is i'm talking about the mathematics that allows us to predict things that are going to happen in the future in the universe as for example cosmologists know that um it seems that cosmologists yeah. know that universe is going to disappear so not arithmetic but as a means to construct new models to determine what will happen in the future well the thing the thing about the question about the um, time the question about uh you said the chimpanzees yeah there's chimpanzees so, that can count yeah to like so 100 but and even backwards now they can count because they have the objects uh in front of them yeah. but i don't know if i don't know and i mean this i really don't know if abstractly with abstract thoughts they can mm. think about the number one now mm. we can actually think about the number one without having an object that represents that number one so it, it, can, it kind of it kind of brings me to the thought of kind of the platonism of mathematics this idea that mathematics is kind of independent of what people do uh, with the physical mathematics you know like something out, yeah. please please I saw a bee coming coming in here today okay that bee is gonna fly back to its hive and it's gonna do a little jig okay. and the craziest thing about bees is they have a dance based language mm. so they are competing with other bees and telling them the sun's going to set in this direction, which is where I do my first wiggle. Uh -huh. Then I'm going to rotate okay. a degree, and I'm going to wiggle for the distance that you need to fly. Uh -huh. Then I'm going to wiggle, turn a direction again, show you where you need to turn, uh -huh. wiggle even harder. And now, and if I wiggle really, really strong, that means there's a lot of pollen here. Uh -huh. If I only wiggle a little bit, that means there's only a little bit of uh -huh. stuff to make nectar out uh -huh. of. But that's how we've constructed their language. It's pretty accurate. Uh -huh. All these bees are flying back and wiggling wiggling, wiggling really, really hard. And all the bees are like, we know what to do. 45 degrees from where the sun's landing, 15 kilometers that way. It's about this much pollen. Let's go where Sally took us. And then they all fly out and they figured it out. I'm not sure if, it may not be expressed in Arabic 
numerals, <laughs> but it is very much a model that we can translate into like our system of mathematics okay. to where it's like these bees are telling each other, turn left here, fly this far, and there'll be this much stuff mm -hmm. at this location. Mm -hmm. It's kind of incredible. Yeah, it is. It seems like there are, even if they aren't using the same written system that yeah. we use, there is very much an impression of the same mathematics yeah. that we're both using. Yeah, that is, yeah, yeah definitely. Now, uh, what do you think, Ty, about, the, for example, the difference of, let's, let's suppose that, mm. well, actually not let's suppose, I, I agree with you, first of all, because I don't have that kind of information about bees, but, sure. I, I, but I really... Yeah. I, I just I, love I, bees. Yes. I, I love these are like my top <laughs> one animal, basically. They're really nice. great. They're just yeah. awesome animals. Cool. And they fashion sense is amazing, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's, nice. go. let's go. Bees are awesome. Yeah. So, okay. they um, make food. They can't even make food. <laughs> yes, yes. Like, this is delicious. We buy their insect vomit. Any other animal would be like, no, yeah. get that away from me. Bees. bees. Oh, okay, it makes more sense. Here's, yeah, of course. Yeah, bees are delicious. Put that in my coffee. Anyway, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that is that is more than I'm fine. I'm sorry. That's that is more than fine. Okay. So, is there is there a difference between the the way the way bees, for example, are are following the patterns of a type of mathematics they are following, as you have described, to the way that humanity is able to recognize a, a type of mathematics that beyond the intuition, mm. like for example. And I don't know how, how good of, a, of a, an example this is going to be. But for example, as a human being, I know when I need to turn left or right in order to avoid, to avoid X and Y. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of we're bringing this type of pattern or maybe with, through communication. Sure. I'm doing certain things that are not tangible, but I'm kind of controlling something that is going to happen mm -hmm. later I hear you. with some type of arithmetic or some type of mathematics. Now, my question is, Ty, this mathematics that... It seems that uh, uh, some mathematicians recognize, which is beyond the human understanding, which sure, is sure, something sure. that is beyond. Do you think that those type, type, types of mathematics are the same? I'm going to just easily tell you I don't know. Okay, okay. But it was more just a way to define what you meant by I see, I mathematics. See. I'm going to take the opposite route. Cool. Now. Okay. So there's a possible. <laughs> <laughs> There's a possibility yeah. that other kinds of minds might use a version of mathematics. Let's take all rational minds out of the universe. Okay. Does mathematics still exist? I, I think so, yeah. So why is your definition dependent on there being rational minds? Well, because... If you don't yeah. need rational minds to have mathematics. Well, because maybe because I, did, I wasn't, I wasn't uh, being very specific about my definition because the type of mathematic, mathematics I was referring to mm -hmm. is a type of mathematics with which you can, for example, predict things that are not happening in, the, uh, in this moment. Okay. Can I just catch uh, up? Of course, please. I'm sorry. Please. You said mathematics are discovered and mathematics are defined by something that can be determined by a rational mind. Yes. But if there's no rational minds, yes. there's still mathematics. The, yes. So clearly mathematics doesn't seem to be dependent on rational minds. Well, maybe I so why is it yeah. part of the definition? Okay, so yeah, maybe that, that's all, all, all completely my problem. I'll try to be more specific. Mathematics exists beyond the existence of rational minds. You don't need rational minds, period. Correct. Now... So, so I'm just going to... Can I Yes, yes, out? please, please. So it's... Now, okay. in order for... In order for, in, to understand the mathematics at the level that we understand it, mm -hmm. it seems that there, there is something unique about us, which is we have beyond the recognition of patterns that animals actually can do, mm -hmm. we can actually go beyond the pattern and the intuition of living in the present mm -hmm. in order to recognize that with, with mathematics we can uh, predict things that are not happening in the present but are going to happen in the future. So I'm talking about something that it seems that the universe is completely rationalized and it can be, it can be understood as, a, as an open book. In mathematics, yeah. are there such things as unknowns? I, I believe so, of course, because if, you, you mean like things that we still don't know? No, unde is the term undefined a valid thing to use in mathematics? I like, see. for example, when you have an Negative. equation that doesn't have a answer that you can determine yes. mathematically, uh -huh. typically what you would write is UND or mm -hmm. it's undetermined. Yes. Or like, this can't be solved uh -huh. with the current stuff. Uh -huh. If it's possible for things to be unknown, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's not an answer or hmm. that's not zero or something like that. It uh -huh. just means. We don't know yet. We need to invent a different 
tier of mathematics to solve that kind of problem. Until then, we just don't know. Yeah. So maybe they're... Maybe it's not so much mathematics to solve everything about the universe. Mm-hmm. Maybe there's just some things that mathematics are limited by. Mm. What do you think about that? I, I really like that. I actually approach this question humbly with the with um, with the perspective of there's some type of mathematics that we haven't discovered. Yeah. And maybe. Yeah. Maybe. maybe. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Maybe of it's course. there. Maybe it's not. Because, for example, let, let's bring uh, to the question to the conversation something I really know nothing about. Mm. I'm just maybe just I'm using arguments for people that are more intelligent than I am. I want to hear your arguments. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. So, for example, yeah. uh, quant- quantum theory. Okay. Careful. I know. Careful. I know. <laughs> Careful. No, no. I know. I'm not doing. I'm not all saying right, anything. I'm right, not right, right. making any statements about no, you're some good, you're things good, I'm good. I'm just that I don't know yet. So. So it seems that, for example, it seems that right now we don't understand what is happening we, we are at the quantum level with certain particles, but, but I'm open with the idea that maybe with some different type of mathematics, we can actually describe what is happening in the future. Yeah, as we increase our resolution, we'll get a better model Correct. that predicts what's Correct. going on. Here's this other weird question. I agree that mathematics is a model. Yeah. We invent the model. Would you, wouldn't you agree? So we, we're inventing a model to explain how the universe works. We, I, I, I agree with the facts that we invented a language that we can understand in order to understand the rationality of the universe. But yeah, okay. In that aspect, yeah, isn't in some part mathematics an invention? Not entirely mm-hmm. an invention, but definitely something that we we construct arbitrarily to express concepts to each other mm. and predict about things okay. in the future or not like put in that aspect mm-hmm. wouldn't you say mathematics is somewhat similar to in mathematics? that aspect mathematics the language in order to understand the mathematical reality of the universe as a model that's not dependent on rational minds so that is that is invented in the in the way that a language is kind, kind of invented in order to communicate ideas absolutely like a language I agree with you do you think mathematics is entirely discovered and not an invention I think that the ultimate reality of mathematics, which is beyond the existence of a mind that can understand it, is there. Okay. So I think that... You think the concepts that it's based on, the concepts that it's expressing are uh, discovered, but the the tool of mathematics is invention. Meaning the language that we use, uh, the models that we use in order to understand it. The model that we make. Correct. Meaning uh, number one, number two, that Mm. didn't exist. I mean, I I don't know, maybe in the past, number zero maybe could have been graphed in a different way, a different shape. Yeah, that's just a different set of mathematics that was invented back then. I'm fine with that. Yeah, but I think it's beautiful that uh, there's... um, there's a type of there's a type of reality there that can be rationalized sure, through the, sure. this language that actually yeah. we are kind of creating. If someone came to the table and says, "I'm 100 percent confident that mathematics is not an invention in any way, shape, or form," <laughs> would you agree with them? Would you repeat the question? I'm sorry. If someone came to the table and says, "I'm 100 percent confident to the point where I know I can't be wrong uh-huh. that mathematics is not an invention in okay. any way, shape, or okay. form," would you agree with them now? It's not an invention. It's not an invention in any way, shape, or form. Well, I would I would agree. Mathematics is not an invention. So it existed beyond time. Well, yeah, but we we have we <laughs> like not the concepts that it's representing, but yeah. mathematics itself. Mathematics, I would agree with him or with her, in the sense of um, it's not an invention in, in the existence of, of mathematics, but not in the language that is used. The cool. language that we're using is so kind of a... Then I think the only thing that we need to work on at this point was just the semantics of when we say mathematics, semantics. are we referring to the concepts that they represent? Yeah. Or the language that we construct to express. Uh, uh-huh. And when I and it sounded like at the beginning we're talking about mathematics as the system of expression. I see, I see, I see. But I agree with you that the concepts that mathematics are based on are discovered through this language that we Let use. Let me ask you a question, Go Ty. Ahead. Go ahead. This is this is actually a. Uh, I'm very lucky that I have the opportunity to ask you these questions. Okay. No, seriously. Too much pressure. No, because okay, I just... Back. This is one of All my these f- guys are right here and you're, no, you're no, loading this question <laughs> way too much and I can't take it. All right, go no, for no, it. No, no, I just love this okay. question so much. What does that entail for you? The, the, the facts that mathematics are discovered. Mm. I am fine with... I am fine with us living in a system 
that we are slowly beginning to understand. Okay. But we need to develop tools to reliably come to conclusions with what we're living with. And I feel like mathematics is a tool that we use to understand reality. Mm -hmm. When you said it's a model, like we use mathematics to build models to explain reality, I'm absolutely with that. Because like, mm -hmm. that's totally what we use mathematics mm -hmm. for. Because if we use mathematics and we were wrong about reality, we will change mathematics uh -huh. so that we can better reflect reality. I think there are some expressions, for example, in math or words that we'd use in math to express things, mm -hmm. only for us to realize we were wrong to express it that way. Let's drop this this tier of math and replace it with something better. I think, for example, like I'm a big nerd for imaginary eye. Like uh. I love eye, but we shouldn't have called it imaginary number. We should have, because it's a very much a real number and a very much real means of expressing something. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And negative numbers, I feel like we should have called them inverse numbers because oh, there's wow. nothing inherently negative about yeah, negative wow. one. It's just inverse of one. Mm -hmm. But like language issues aside, these are things that we can change. We can change tomorrow. We can call imaginary number real numbers. Okay. We can improve mathematics to better fit the model that we live in. And because we can change mathematics, that tells me that it's a tool for us to understand the universe. Mm. It's not necessarily the universe. Mm -hmm. And while they are very much compatible now, that was only through the work of many people who are working with mathematics to get to the point where it's at now. Huh. And I'm totally fine with us using mathematics as a tool that we invent. Mm -hmm. But I also think it's cool that we can use a tool to figure out how the universe works. Definitely. And what we're discovering here, if I can discover it here and you can discover it in mm -hmm. a different place in the world, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Because it means we're working towards a more objective truth. That is, yeah. So uh, another question for you, Ty. Hmm. Um, so in languages, uh, my experience is that sometimes, well, languages are always changing yes. and developing themselves. Yeah. And, and that is a, a, actually a beautiful thing because is is adapting to what is happening in society with humanity, the way we think about things around us. So sometimes people stop using certain words because the kind of connotations yeah. and definitions yeah. that they bring to the stale. table. Mm -hmm. Actually, for example, today in, in, during my workshop, mm. Anthony asked me, uh, what was my definition of, of an atheist? And it was an interesting question. And I was very honest. I, uh, I didn't have one at the moment because when I, when I think about the, that that word has is so loaded mm. that I because, because the, when I think about uh, when I think ab about an atheist the first thing that I think about an atheist not about atheism is just a person like me yeah. so I start with that common ground mm. so it's not like I don't think about that division sure. and I, I'm sure I understand that this is just my appreciation of the word I could choose to understand the word in a different way but sure. so these connotations and definitions that uh, we have in languages do you think that the same is happening with mathematics? Yes. Which is, we, we're trying to develop a oh, new absolutely. way. Oh, mm absolutely. -hmm. If you go, this is, this is more of like just a nerdy moment for okay. me. That is but great. say you go back to 1700, no. Nah. We started thinking about numbers as, you got one point here, this represents a one of something. Yeah. You got two points here, this represents two of something. Three points here, three something. We didn't even have zero. We were just counting from one up. Then uh, around like Greece time, like Renaissance era, like when we're starting to like, hey, numbers mean things. Mm -hmm. before, wait, actually, actually, in Aztec culture, they figured out zero first way before even the Greeks. Huh. But um, they figured out, hey, there's a value called zero, which is like when you have nothing. We should include that. Then we started getting decimals, which is like there's numbers in between numbers that are of value. And you can see like it's evolving to better reflect how the world works. We didn't start with the numerical system that we have today. Mm -hmm. We worked on it yeah. evolutionarily over a long period of time. Mm -hmm. And who's to say that where we're at right now is where it's going to be? If you were to ask me where it's at right now, so an engineering firm that I work at right now, we don't count, we don't express ourselves with X, Y coordinates, where it's just like, oh, it's it's um, X, Y, we need a point, it's 2, 1. We oh. don't say that. We say it's like uh, 3i. Oh, Plus, wow. and because we need to think of things in a additional dimension. I see. That's wow. that is not just with X, Y. Wow. So sooner or later, all kids are going to learn I in elementary school, mm -hmm. and I think that's going to be the new standard way of how we're going to be expressing ourselves mathematically. And who knows what's going to be after that? Mm -hmm. The reason why I say I is because that's an inherently a two-dimensional number. Mm -hmm. It has a uh, shape to it when you express okay. it, whereas x, y is a point on a graph, mm -hmm. i gives like some planar 
qualities to it. And that's really, really useful when you're expressing things with curvature, when you're designing a plane, when you're making a wing, you're going to use I, you're not going to use standard numbers. Yeah. Standard numbers are limited, they're one points. I is like two dimensional. What if we use three dimensional numbers in the future, four dimensional numbers in the future? Who knows how we're going to be counting thousand years from now? We might look at a number chart and be like, I don't even know what that is. Like, it's numbers, you can't count. Not in the year 2019, apparently. It seems, it seems, yeah, yeah. So it seems, that, it seems that it kind of all boils down to the way we convey information. Yes. Because have you seen the movie, the excellent, amazingly, amazing movie? What's the name of it? Uh, Tropic Thunder? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no. no. Power Rangers? No. Um, Junior, nobody cared. Nobody cared because it was great. And now we can't make that movie again. You know, we have to wait another 16 years before we can do that again. But it was good when it happened. It was like, just, this is where everyone can laugh. I'm it's sorry. crazy that I've for, for, forgotten about the name the, the name of the movie. This movie that there are aliens that come to Earth and they're teaching us a new way to speak. Contact? Co no, 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 no. Um, and they, te they teach us, it's a kind of recent movie. All right, all right, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. It's all right. I cannot believe it's that okay. I've forgotten this. You have my contact information. You have my contact info, Okay, okay. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah. And get I, it, I'll it, contact it. you. Um, so they teach, they teach, uh, they, there's a linguist that comes sure. to, yeah, the, yeah. to the spaceship. It's a, it's a lady with a ponytail. Yes, stand. yes, yeah, yes. I know, yeah, I know that movie. Yes. I've seen the trailer. Uh, correct. And they, in, oh, so I, I, should I tell you what happens? I'm fine with it. Okay, because it's, it's a very good movie. Okay. I don't know if I should tell you because it's something to discover. That. Then you want to hide it until maybe next time? Yeah, let's do it because it's, okay. it's, it's a good movie. Okay. Hi. Pedro, I had a great time talking to you. Oh my gosh. I'll contact you okay. about uh, future opportunities, okay? Cool. And we'll just meet and I'll tell you everything about that. Sounds cool. Yeah, Nashville's nearby for me. Feel free to contact me. Arrival! Boom! Arrival, Ty. Spoiler alert. <laughs> James, you want to? <laughs> Thank you, Ty. See ya. Yeah, I didn't have anything, but uh, we had the intermission, so I came to see if you got anybody. You want to do it real quick? I, I don't. I, you have nothing you care about? I just show me exactly. You are a soulless husk of a human being. Basically. You want to talk about that? <laughs>